right, Jess is going to start with the curl up. She's just going to go do the sets and rep scheme from the back mechanic. And she's got the setup down right. So she's got, you can go ahead, Jess. She's got one knee bent about 90 degrees or whatever. Hands are like this or like this stacked underneath the, the inward curve and the low back. So right in the curve, that's where she's keeping her hands to support or at least act as sensor so she knows she's not flattening that inward curve of the low back. And her reps, her static hold position looks, looks very good as well. So pause for a second, Jess. So if we want to break this down a little further, <clears throat> Well, I'll, say, I'll, tell, I'll talk about what she's doing good. So she's got the setup position here. She can probably move her hands in a little bit more. She's lightly floating the elbows. Um, she, what she's doing is doing an ab race. Relax for a second. She's a little ticklish. Go ahead, push my fingers out, good. Lightly floating the elbows, lifting the head, neck, and shoulders up. Your head is going up too high, sorry. Mm -hmm. She was doing it perfect. Mm -hmm. there, there, that's one of the common mistakes is she flexed her head too much. So just keep the head and neck neutral. She's got this portion of her her shoulders off the mat. So you're just lifting the head, neck, and shoulders, this area all along here. Just lift them up like an inch or two, not too much. And she's got a little bit of a chin poke going on, so I'm just gonna, yep, relax right there. Yep, that's good. I'm gonna correct that. Chin pokers or chin tuckers, correct that. And go ahead and relax. Okay, now we're gonna break down the steps. So what she's doing here is she's gonna give you a little bit of an oblique ab brace. So if you want to dig your fingers into your obliques about one or two inches and then contract your obliques to push your fingers outward this way, that's the ab brace we want. This is step number one, relax, Jess. Go ahead, push my fingers out, perfect. Lightly float the elbows. Next, lift the head, neck, and shoulders. So that's the correct order there. And then after she's done with her 10 second hold, say, she's gonna do the reverse. So lower the head, neck, and shoulders, low, uh, lower the elbows, release the ab brace. So that's the correct steps if you wanna break it down. Let's call that the first set. So in between sets, you can switch legs. On to the next exercise. Let's say the common mistakes for this one is, yeah, lifting, lifting the head and neck too high, the head, neck, and shoulders too high. The, low, the lower you are, the harder, the more challenging this is gonna be. And chin pokers are just not even lifting the head, neck, and shoulders, just lifting, just lifting the head. You're not even really doing a curl up, even though it's called the modified curl up, you're not even really doing a curl up. You're just kind of elevating your head, neck, and shoulders that way, up towards the ceiling. Now, if she wanted to make this a little more challenging, she, it's, relax for a second, Jess, she could add a more forceful ab brace, and then she's, then she's doing that curl up motion against the resistance of her own brace. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna scratch here, you're gonna say fight me, you're gonna brace harder, and then you're gonna go ahead Lightly float the elbows, lift the head and shoulders, lifting against the resistance of your own ab brace. You'll feel it, so uh, relax for a second. Okay, fight me. Good. Nice. Did you feel that on the way up? Mm -hmm. It's a little harder to get into that static hold position when you add a more forceful ab brace, but just be careful. And then with, with too much bracing, obviously that's a double-edged sword. Too much bracing will add too much of a compressive load down the spine, so just, just enough bracing. And once you're up in that position, you don't have to hold the brace really forcefully. You could probably just hold just brace all, all that you'll need. Just enough force bracing just that allows you to hold that position. Okay, good job, Jess. Thank you. All right, she's gonna move on to the side plank. Okay. You feeling okay? Mm -hmm. All right, side plank. She's doing the intermediate variation of the side plank, so she's doing the rolling rolling side plank. And Jess's feet position, I'm gonna have her narrow up her stance just a little bit. One of the seminars I took, they corrected me on that, just not so wide with the feet. Poggy, go ahead on, buddy. Poggy, go ahead on. Go ahead on, buddy. Go ahead on, Augie. And she could put her arms like that if she wants, like that spine too, or just at the side. Either way, whatever you want to do, it's fine. Go back to the front plank position, you grab your, get your balance, and then you spin out to the other side for another 10 second hold. So she's doing 10 second holds each side, and everything looks good. Uh, come back to the front plank position for a second, pause, go to your knees for a moment, just 
the co most common mistakes with the with the side plank, which just isn't doing, is twisting at the at the core or, or along the pelvis and the rib cage should not move together as a unit, rather the rib cage and the pelvis separating and breaking apart for each other. So twisting at the lumbar spine, you want to keep the rib cage and the pelvis together. They kind of move as one unit, and Jess is doing that perfectly. She's pivoting on her toes and she's rotating at the shoulder girdle, and that's that's the goal of this exercise. So go ahead and show us a couple more reps. If someone's having trouble with this, what it would look like is that, say they go out to one side, the pelvis might lead the motion and then the rib cage or the shoulder will come, come back to the side position. Or alternatively, come back out to this side again, normally, just like normally, just normally. Yep. Alternatively, somebody might start the motion going down, leading with the shoulder, yep, and then the, the pelvis comes. So you want to keep these locked together. So in this situation, what I would do, Usually as I take the heel of my hand and the pelvis, fingers on the ribcage, and I'll guide them. I say, keep this together, and then go to your other side. Yep, good. Yep, let's call that a 10-second hold now. Um, what I'll, oh, another cue I can give, especially if they're leading with the pelvis, I say, well, I want you to pick up, when you go to this side, I want you to pick, think about picking up this arm first, and I want you to pull down with your lats from here. Ready? Go. Nice. So that's just a, because your lats kind of hook in with your thoracolumbar fascia. Or your yeah, thoracolumbar fascia, I think is the word. And they hook in with the pelvis, or the, the rib cage, those muscles there. So that kind of it, it allows you to lock the pelvis and the rib cage together, sort of a bracing mechanism. Okay, well done, Jess. And move on to the bird dog. That's quite the workout. Yeah, no, that's good. Mm -hmm. Exercise number three, bird dog. And just just does these exercises very well. So this is an easy, this is an easy video for me to do. There's really not much to say because she, she does these well. Um, I like, what I like about this is she's pushing the heel away here, not pointing the toes this way. That's gonna further tension the posterior chain, glutes on, perfect. And she's making a fist here, just about 50% max contraction. And what that does, tension in the posterior chain is gonna further activate the glute and the low back on this side. The fist is going to further activate the upper back muscle on this side. You're getting that X pattern of walking and running. This side, you're not training, you're training this side. And this side's relaxed, but we're going to do the other side when she goes, when she's done with the, her reps on this side. Okay, so now she's done. She did her six reps, say, on the one side. Now she's going to do the six on the other side. And everything looks good. She's not lifting the leg too high. That's a common mistake. Leg to the floor, like parallel to the floor, even lower is fine. As long as your glutes on and your core is stable, that's that's the whole exercise. It's glute on, core not moving. It's a glass of water here, it's not spilling. You're only moving at the ball and socket joints, the hip and the shoulder. I like how she's coming back down, she's sweeping the floor, she's relaxing those muscles for a second before she goes out for another 10 second hold. She's rounding her low back a little bit, which I don't want to see. So what I'm going to say, Jess, is try to keep, do not let this flatten out. Yes, good, perfect. She corrected it there. So she has a nice inward curve in the low back. What I saw is when she came in, saw a little bit of a, a rounding of the low back. You want to keep that, keep the neutral spine position as you come back down, sweep the floor, and then back up. Because this is, this is going to engineer out faulty movement patterns. So say she was a sprinter, every time she lifts up that, that leg, she might round her back. So what this is gonna train, this exercise is, is, a, is a movement pattern as well as a stabilization exercise. It's gonna train you to be able to sprint and pick that leg up without rounding your low back. So you're only, again, you're, all, you're moving at the hip, you're not moving your back. That's, that's what this exercise will help, what pattern will help you train. <laughs> okay. And yeah, common mistakes with this one, you can take a break for a second, Jess. Is if just, yeah, like I said, lifting the leg too high. Sometimes if you're lifting the leg too high, the pelvis might rotate again. We don't want that. We want to keep the core, the pelvis, just solid, sturdy. We don't want the glass of water to tip over. And if you want to make it a little more challenging, Jess, would you mind showing them drawing the one foot squares? Mm -hmm. So 
this is sort of an intermediate or advanced version of the bird dog. Why don't you go ahead and try on the other side since Augie's oh, in the yeah. way, sorry. <laughs> so she's gonna go right to this side. And what she can do here, draw one foot square. So out, down, back in, and up. Da out, down, back in, up. Okay, come back to the side position. Come back to the front, yep, and back out. Make sure not to round the low back when you come back in and sweep the floor. She's just drawing, what she's doing is she's just drawing one foot squares with her arms. So out, down, back in, up, good, come back, good, nice. Okay, looks good, and she's not collapsing too much. We got to go on to uh, all fours for a moment. Sure. She's not collapsing too much into her shoulders, letting this sink here. She's kind of pushing the, the earth away. She's in a nice neutral spine position. If you're having trouble finding your neutral spine position, you can do a little cat camel, go to full extension of the cat camel, and then just from full extension of the cat camel, just dial it back like an inch or two. Usually that's a pretty good, a pretty good spot. Your, your back's ready to bear load in that position, so go out again. <laughs> and like a little too high, so a little rotation of the pelvis, but Augie's in the way too, so we'll go easy. We won't critique Jess too much. <laughs> and that looks very good. I like how our hips, her knees are under her hips, hands are under the shoulders. Really not much, not much to critique there. Okay. Any questions, Jess? No. Well done. Thank All you. right. Thank you very much. Thank you.